So hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I have a really fun video for you today. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use Expo Native Views. In order to create a view that's updated completely on the native side and that we get events from on the React Native side. Uh, I hope this will be really exciting for you guys because I've had many, many requests asking how do you make uh, these sort of native views that can talk to React Native and today we're going to do exactly that. I've refrained from doing it in the past because it's fairly difficult in React Native uh, vanilla. However, in Expo, it is very easy and I'm very excited to show you guys today. So uh, please like and subscribe and uh, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do our usual npx expo create module command and we're gonna call the project expo sample gyro view. I'm gonna enter through everything because I'm not gonna upload this to npm. And next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete the web files because we're not doing web support today. And then I'm gonna delete the uh, module files because we're making a native view and not a native module. Okay, let's open VS Code. All right, so in VS Code, the first thing I wanna do is show you guys kind of what our API is gonna look like. It's not implemented yet, but I did some uh, example stuff for us, so that's ready. So in the gyro view, we're gonna make it reactive. So what we're gonna say is, uh, if tracking's true, we're gonna track the gyros. If it's false, we're not. We're gonna make placeholder text, which is gonna be that thing you see before the gyro starts. Style's just built into the view. And finally, we're gonna have on gyro event, when every time there's a gyro event, uh, we're basically gonna do something with it in React Native. So yeah, I'll comment it out for now, and uh, this is our goal in the end. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is actually make some changes to our library. First, we're gonna to want to go to, to Expo Sample Gyro View. We're gonna export a type for our props, and we're gonna do the placeholder text first, because it's easiest. After that, we're going to delete everything in the index and we're just going to export our props in our view just to make life a lot easier. Okay, now we need to go into iOS. We did Android last time first, so let's do iOS this time. We're going to reveal. We're going to ignore the top level iOS folder. We're going to go into example, open that iOS folder, then double click on the white XE workspace icon. After that, you need to go into pods, development pods, and find our project right there, the Expo Sample Gyro View. So this file, uh, Gyro View, just get it from my GitHub sample project, and I'm gonna link that in the description. I don't wanna make a whole thing of how to write Swift, um, but basically you can just use my view in this project and everything should work perfectly fine. Okay, so as you can see, this is just some Swift code doing Swift things, as you might expect. Uh, next changes we're gonna make is in the view module. So we're just gonna delete everything here that isn't the view. And we're gonna make our placeholder text inside the prop that's already there and just delete uh, whatever else was in there. Next, we're gonna go into the expo view for the sample gyro view, which is also provided for us. We're gonna create our gyro view. And in the constructor, we're going to assign the app context. We're going to uh, clip our view to the bounds. We're gonna add the gyro view sub view to the expo view. And then the last thing we're gonna do is in layout sub views, we're going to set the views frame to the bounds of the expo view frame. At this point, all we need to do is use the gyro view that's built in and set the placeholder text to the text we pass in from the prop. All right, so back in VS Code, what we're gonna do is we're gonna uncomment the gyro view and we're gonna test to see if placeholder text works. Oh, you see I made a mistake here with style. Let me quickly fix that. I have to add the view props from React Native to the props from my view for TypeScript to notice things properly. All right, now uh, let's compile and let's see if everything worked. All right, so here we are with everything compiled and running. Uh, I'm gonna change the text and as you can see, we can hot reload. Pretty exciting. We're hot reloading on a custom component that uh, we created ourselves in the native code. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up everything for events. Uh, I'm gonna do both at once, the text update and the events, just cause uh, it's pretty easy on the iOS side. Um, I'm gonna specify my event as the gyro event constant I created in the string. I'm gonna create our track prop and I'm gonna have our is tracking state 
from React Native. Uh, we're going to say if it's tracking, we are going to get the gyro view to track the event or start tracking gyros. And we're going to stop if it's false. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an event dispatcher and I'm going to pass that into our gyro view with the set event dispatcher. Now this is interesting um, and I'm just going to show you this quickly. Uh, if you notice on line 40, I have this line on gyro event that's just sending the YJSON to React Native that you can do through the event dispatchers. Okay, so I'm gonna export a type for my event now. And uh, I'm gonna put it into the props. Tracking is of course a Boolean and on gyro event, of course is a uh, native event with the type on gyro event, returns void. Oh, I made a typo there. Uh, I'll fix that in a second, but I'll uncomment everything uh, so we can use it and I'll change it back to gyros. All right, so let's compile. Um, I'm gonna, and yeah, let's see if everything worked. Okay, so after compiling, I noticed there's kind of a gotcha here that we're gonna fix. Uh, the modal didn't show um, when the gyro event happened, when the foam was flipped upside down. And let me just quickly show you how to fix that. Um, so what happens is, this event dispatcher needs to be named after the event you actually want to dispatch. It's a little bit magic, I know, uh, but you have to be careful about that. So I'm going to copy the name of the event and I'm going to paste it into the variable and the set event dispatcher. And let's compile again and we should see everything work. All right, guys, so here we are. Let's uh, test things out. So if I hit track, you'll see that it's tracking the gyros. If I go down or if I go up, and now if I flip the phone upside down, we will see that event come in that shows the model. And uh, yeah, all right guys, let's uh, move on to Android. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is work on Android. So again, in the top level, ignore the top level Android folder and go into example. Under example, click that Android folder. And then you can just click and drag that folder in Android Studio and Android will open the example level um, Android folder. Remember, do not open the top level one, open the example level Android folder. Uh, okay, so this is gonna take a minute to index. When it's done, switch to the project pane. In the top folder, find the expo sample gyro view, which we're working on. And you'll notice that a couple files have already been provided to us by expo, which is good. We'll need them in a minute. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is copy and paste the gyro event listener from me. Um, I will leave the link in the description to my example project and you can copy paste it from there. Uh, again, this is more of a Kotlin focused thing than an Expo focused thing. So I wanted to kind of um, not focus on it too much in the tutorial. Uh, most of the actual moving parts are in Expo. Okay, so in the view module, I'm going to delete all of the unused code now. I'm gonna leave the view though. Of course we need that. And now I'm gonna create our placeholder text prop. Back in the gyro view, we're gonna to have to make things a little differently than iOS. We don't have a nice pre-made view for us. Uh, we're gonna to have to first create our invented dispatcher. After that, what we're gonna do is create an Android text view, which we pass the context into. In the also, we run add view similar to iOS and we add the text view to it. Uh, finally, we do these layout params, which allow us to center everything. Um, this first part, I just say match the view size to the size of the parent view. After that, the gravity throws things in the center. Next thing we want to do is set the text size of this text view. And I'm just going to make it really huge, uh, just so it's easy to see on camera. Finally, I'm going to create a function called update text that we can use to update the text in our text view. Okay, so when placeholder text is set, all I'm going to do is I'm going to set the text here. All right, so let's handle events. Uh, we're going to create our gyro event constant. After that, we're going to declare the event as we must always do in Expo. I'm going to create my track prop. And what I'm going to do here 
is grab the is tracking property. And I'm gonna add some spaces so that I can kind of keep this up high. Uh, but I'm gonna grab the activity from the app context here. And then I'm gonna grab the application context from the activity. And if there's an application context and we have not initialized the um, listener yet, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually initialize it. And this is probably a good time to add all these things to the state of our um, class. So I'm gonna add the is initialized, uh, the placeholder text, and the gyro listener. Okay, so now in here, I'm gonna say it is initialized because we got in here. I'm gonna create our event listener. It has a callback and in that callback, I'm gonna update the text in our view. Then I'm gonna send the event to React Native. To do that, I'm gonna map Y to the value that comes back from the event listener. Pretty simple. Finally, I'm gonna say that the listener tracking is true. And I'm gonna set the text to the placeholder text or start depending on uh, whether you specified it or made it undefined. Okay, so uh, let's compile and see how things turned out. Okay, so here we go again, this time in Android. So I'm gonna hit track. I uh, see here that when we're level, we're near one. If we tilt back, we closer to 80s. We tilt forward, we get the same kind of thing. Uh, now I'm going to start tilting to the side and flip upside down. And as you can see, when we flip upside down, we get the uh, warning model just as we're supposed to, which is pretty cool. All right. Thanks, everyone, and happy hacking.